I'm going to start my presentation off with a quick uh, video. So today, I'm going to be emphasizing the importance of proper firearm safety. Um, So in 2011, uh, there were 600 people that were taken or died due to unintentional firearm injuries or accidents. Um, as you can see here, this starts from 1981, goes all the way down to 2013. Um, as the per capita rate of firearm owners increased, you can see there's a pretty steady decline, a uh, little couple increases in the accidental deaths, but it goes down quite a bit, all the way down to less than 600 as of two years ago. Um, in the last, or er, flashback, uh, from 2005 to 2010, um, about uh, 3,800 people were killed due to accidental firearm injuries. Um, if you double that, and uh, 2015, it's about 7,600 people that have died. Um, considering the amount of people that have that buy firearms and that have increased over the years, um, I'd say that's a fairly low number. And then, mainly I wanted to focus on the actual handling of firearms. Obviously I can't do that in the classroom setting. That is incredibly illegal and I would go to jail in two seconds. Um, so I took some pictures for you guys. Uh, this is my own personal handgun. Um, it's a Glock 19 9 millimeter. Um, the the semi-automatic handgun, which means that you only squeeze the trigger one time and one bullet goes off. So I always keep my firearm locked up in inside of its case, inside this lock here, the key. Um, I keep on my person at all times. Um, just so no one can get into it. I have cousins that come to my house quite often, and I don't want them getting into something like this, whether it's locked or not. Um, so I always keep it like this, slide open with the lock on it, and then if I do ever take it out, um, I keep the slide open just like this. Um, the magazine, you can see, is inserted in here, and this one it's actually not inserted. Um, but slide's always open on the firearm. Um, and the main thing that you always want to assume when you're handling a firearm, that the firearm's always loaded. So you never want to just assume, hey, you know, I unloaded it last time, whether you own a firearm or not. I unloaded it last time, I know it's unloaded, because you never know if someone can come in, tamper with it, do anything with it. You never know. Um, secondly, if you are handling a firearm, you always want to keep it pointed in a safe direction. Um, I'll give you an example right now. As we're standing in a two-story building, if I was holding one, would I be wanting to point it downstairs? No, there could be people downstairs. If I were to pull the trigger, a bullet could go through the floor, hit someone, hurt someone. I would want to keep it pointed up. Um, next, when, you're, when you are handling a firearm, um, you want to know what you're shooting at and what is beyond your target. So you never want to go, let's go through the door, see, what, see where, where it'll go, because you never know what's beyond that door, and if, there, if there's just nothing, it can travel for miles. The bullet can travel for miles and miles and miles. And it could, it could hit someone or something, um, mainly. Next, um, I took a couple more pictures. Um, when you are handling a firearm, if you, once you know that it's unloaded and it's safe, um, you always wanna hold the firearm correctly with your finger away from the trigger at all times until you are ready to fire. Um, as you can see, in right here, my, my finger is above the trigger. Um, it's what a lot of people like to call trigger control. Um, and it's, it's actually uh, a really big important rule that a lot of people tell you to follow. And then, if you guys didn't get it from the very beginning, um, the main, uh, one of the 
other main ones is never look down the barrel of an unloaded or loaded gun. If you guys saw that in the video, that guy was, uh, that was pretty stupid to think that someone would actually do that. Um, what had actually happened in that video is the gentleman that was firing his shotgun, he had a misfire in his cartridge. And when that happens, you never know if the cartridge is going to go off later or if it's not going to go off at all. So when that happens, you want to keep the gun pointed in a safe direction and never look down the barrel until you know it's safe. Normally the rule of thumb is you wait about 10 seconds um, and wait for, it to, wait for it to discharge. If it does not discharge, then you can clear the, um, you can clear the uh, chamber and toss the cartridge away. Now if it does fire, then you clear the chamber either way and just thank your lucky stars that you can look down the barrel of your gun. Um, and in conclusion, um, firearms are very, very dangerous objects. Um, even if you know how to handle them, you always want to try and learn more about your own firearms. Um, I've had this one for a couple of months. I've only shot it maybe a number of times. But they can do a great amount of damage and harm to people if they're not used properly. People, places, or things, you know. And if you or someone you know does not understand how to use a firearm, you should always ask questions, whether you're at a shooting range and you can ask one of the um, uh, range officers. They can show you how to properly handle your firearm. They're um, certified um, by the NRA. Or, you know, if you have someone that knows how to use that firearm, then ask them, and they should be able to give you proper instructions. Uh, thank you. Hey, can you tell me the time on that? Uh, 6.04. Thank you. That's not counting the video. I didn't put in the video for that. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Travis. All right. Um, I really like the attention getter. Uh, the topic overall is something that everyone should know, so I like the topic. Um, I didn't really feel you had a summary, and then, but you had a thesis <coughs> statement saying what you're going to talk about, and then uh, the pictures that you had. You know, like you said, you couldn't bring your gun in to demonstrate, so you explained the pictures very well. Um, you, kind of, you might have, like, just talk about the slide. I'm pretty sure not everyone knows about the slide. So if you know about guns, then you, you'll understand it. Uh, you also explained in the video how that's exactly what not to do. So that's good, because you don't want someone to try that. And then you talked about the importance of firearm safety, which, again, is your topic. So, you know, you really emphasize that. Uh, you didn't really cite anything that I didn't hear. And then... It seemed a little short, but they said it was like six minutes, so you're like a minute off. And then you had a good review, so you went through everything again, which kind of recapped everything. <laughs> All right, the, the video clip I thought was pretty solid. The topic area is very nicely identified there. 
I thought your thesis was a little ambiguous. I know what the subject is, but what you're going to tell us about it is not as clear, and there's not really a preview at all about uh, what steps we're going to go through, what uh, actions we could take to prevent this from happening, uh, what are the key things that we need to learn in this context. It just feels a little bit random when you're presenting information. And, you know, most of your points, I think, are relevant to the subject matter. It's not like they don't belong in there, but it doesn't seem like there's any particular... Why is one thing more important than another? Why is one thing coming first? Why, you know, uh, how dangerous is that issue or th some other issue? We don't get any context for a lot of these kinds of things. It just feels like random bits of information, all good pieces of information, but not put together very effectively. And I think when you watch back, I think you'll see that it does feel a little choppy sometimes, that you're just, you're just getting a little bit of information here and there. Uh, so I think that organizationally, that's where you've got some problems. I'm going to agree with Travis about the research. I, the only yeah. research that I heard or saw was in that chart at the, at the beginning, and there's, I don't even remember if you gave us a source for the chart, but later on I heard a lot of people tell you to follow these rules, and that was as close as I got to any uh, research in the subject. I mean, there have got to be NRA handbooks all over the place about this. I'm sure that there are hundreds of articles that people have written about this. There are books that people read to get prepared for this kind of stuff. There are stories to tell, and you're kind of just doing it you know, it feels a little bit like you're winging it from your experience, yeah. which, look, when you've got experience, everybody's tempted, I know what I'm talking about, you know, that kind of thing. But a speech has to be put together for an audience. It's not just put together, you know, for you. It, it's put together for an audience, and I think that there's some things that are missing as a consequence. I did think that you made a good choice with the visuals. I thought that... The idea of showing things was clearer with the pictures that you took, so we could see, you know, the the trigger control thing that you're talking about. So we could see how you're talking about having the slide open and uh, either locked in position with your lock, or you're able to visually check all of the time. I, I mean, I thought those worked really well in fixing the problem, not being able to bring your gun in and show us that kind of stuff, you know, which is, you know. I thought uh, those were good choices. But like I said, it, again, it feels a little bit like, well, here's another thing and here's yeah. something else. And in fact, I think there's a place where I wrote about your transitions. Your transition basically consists of next, 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 and it doesn't really feel like there's anything except kind of a checklist that you're going through as a consequence. All right, thank you.